every year at this time, Joe and I look at each other or call each other or text each other. And the subject, the content of those looks, calls, and texts are. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Can you facepalm? Can you believe it? <laughs> they did it again. <laughs> <laughs> back at it. They're back at it. They're back like they left something. Who's they? It's the Grammys. Uh, the Grammy nominations are out for the you know 927th annual Grammys. Uh, I'm I'm so I'm so far into the Grammys narrative, and then I'm back out because I'm so far in. I no longer like I know we did the thing last week. Where it was like surprises and snubs. Like that, like that's a headline. Yeah. I I I lack the capacity for surprise. Mm-hmm. I do not believe anything is a snub. No outrage. I no. I it is a fundamentally flawed process that I understand the matrix of too well. And so it just simply what it it, it simply is what it is. And we are here this week to talk about what it is. To talk about what it is and also perhaps peel back a little bit of the layer, a few layers on why they are like this. Why are you like this, National Recording Academy? Why are you like this? So we're going to talk about the Grammy nominations. We're also going to talk about The Curse, which is not the name of the Grammy nominations. Uh, The Curse is the new show from Nathan Fielder. Uh, Benny Safdie is in it. Emma Stone is in it. It is a meta, meta, meta dramedy about reality television and personal ethics uh, in the American Southwest, I guess, sort of. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to do songs of the week, uh, a little different this week. We're going to talk about uh, big hits, and I with quotes, big hits by Jack Harlow and Dua Lipa. Big new hits. Big new. Are they? They new. Are they big? Are they hits? <laughs> we're going to find out. We're literally going to assess all three of those words. Uh, and then snack of the week. Uh, new but, YouTube channel. Oh, like and subscribe. Subscri- First of all, literally subscribe. YouTube.com slash podcast. Not only every episode, all the audio episodes as well. If you are the type to have a logo on your screen on your YouTube thing and you want to listen to me talk uh, or Joe talk. Um, clips, shorts. Uh, if you're only interested in what we had to say about Priscilla but couldn't bear to listen to us talk about The Golden Bachelor. Strange. But that's available to you too. So anyway. YouTube.com slash podcast, new channel, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, a thing to which I do not like and do not wish to subscribe are the yearly Grammy nominations. Um, I've already said my piece. You, as look, on the day of, mm-hmm. I, you're working hard. Mm-hmm. Getting Victoria Monet on the phone. It's true. I had a nice chat with Victoria yeah, Monet. Yeah, you just be out here performing the labor. Yep. Um, Tell me a little bit about your your gut reaction to who we can get to who wasn't nominated later, but yeah. to who was nominated. Uh, pretty normal year, which is to say, people being nominated, and we're just like, that's bizarre that you have five uh, to nine nominations. But even beyond that, like this was always going to be Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, and SZA. Yes, top nominees. Mm-hmm. Um, fine, good. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they made work. Was it their best work? I don't know. Uh, but it was big. It was meaningful. One of those three people, it's their best work. Okay. I know who you're talking about. I know you know. Do you want me to guess? Yeah. SZA. Correct. Okay. Uh, Taylor Swift made Midnight's. Fine. Olivia Rodrigo made Guts. Fine. Karma is the guy on the Chiefs. <laughs> Karma is the guy on the Chiefs. Um, and then there's a few wild cards. Uh, there's a lot of Miley Cyrus in here. I have a lot of thoughts on that, actually. Uh, I think Flowers is a legitimate record of the year contender. Absolutely. I can buy myself flowers. Write my name in sand. Talk to myself for hours. Say things you don't. We can get to record of the year. Yep. I think mm-hmm. I expected to see that. I did not expect to see. In fact, I had to look up what the name of the Miley Cyrus album was. It's called Endless. You know what it's called? 
I I because I listened finish, to finish finish that endless summer vacations. <laughs> okay, but you weren't positive. I think no. vacation singular, but yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, but fine. Much uh, like living in Florida, endless summer vacations. Yes, not yeah. a not a not an not an album that needed to be recognized as as a whole, but big, but big I have single. Some, but I have thoughts on why it was. Okay, we'll get there. Yeah, um, and then there's Boy Genius. There is Boy Genius. I saw this coming. Did you see this coming? I did kind of see this coming. Um, it's an interesting example of three artists who more or less on their own maybe would not have arrived at this, or at least certainly not this quickly. And not at maybe, the top categories. I think I think there's a path. If there's no boy genius, I think there's like a five-year plan for Phoebe Bridgers to arrive at this. Sure. I'm not sure if it's what Julian Baker is striving for. I'm not sure if it's what Lucy Dick is striving for. I do kind of think it is what Phoebe Bridgers is striving for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's like a five-year plan. There is something, They cut to the chase. There is something additive about a super group. Uh, the Grammys love a super group. It's true. This, that, this is the Highwaymen. The Traveling Wilburys. Yes. Um, this, these are the Traveling Wilburys yeah. of, of this world. I want to talk about commercial success, critical success, and then industry success as three distinct things and how the Grammys try to mix all of those together when they're creating their slate of nominees. So those those it are the... It is created. It is created. Those are the top line nominees to me. Then you get to maybe less expected people also with a lot of nominations. Victoria Monet, mm-hmm. you mentioned, longtime songwriter for Ariana Grande and mm-hmm. many others, uh, breaking out on her own mm-hmm. with her debut full length, Jaguar 2, got a ton of nominations. Now, I want to talk about why that might be. I, I believe I can help with that. Both in terms of quality and yep. and what mm-hmm. Victoria Monet does uh, as a singer mm-hmm. and a songwriter and uh, as an R&B singer specifically mm-hmm. um and then this is where the head scratching begins John Batiste no <laughs> No. John Batiste again. If I, if I, if I ever were to have words muted on a social media platform, mm-hmm. they would be John Batiste. Luckily, I don't think a ton of people are tweeting about okay. John Batiste. Okay. You're not going to mute a lot. Um John Batiste won maybe think back with me. John Batiste won the Grammy for album of the year. No, he did. 2 years ago. That's not true. For an album called can you name it? No. Uh, is it is it called music? <laughs> it's called We Are. This is the point in the show when you literally could be making this up. Yeah, yeah. Genuinely, you could yeah. be making this up, and I have no idea. Nor would any listener. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in the fact that John Batiste is not popular as a musician. This goes to my question of commercial versus critical versus industry support. John Batiste made another album. Apparently. Ben wrote a story about yeah, it. Yeah. Was- I, I, which I... That I knew this existed. That's the best I can say about it. It's called World Music Radio. Yes. There is a really good Ben Cesario cover oh, story. Oh, was <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was going to say the album was really good. Y'all almost got me. <laughs> yeah, I almost got, Y'all you. got you. Um, Our colleague Ben Cesario, cover of Arts and Leisure a couple months back. Uh, I thought he did a really good job of putting John Batiste into context. John Batiste, uh, for those who don't know, from a family of New Orleans musicians. It's the musical director of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Yes. On the very network that the Grammys are on. Yes. Can I just put my Perellis hat on for a minute? Yeah. John Perellis, chief pop music critic in the New York Times, who, when words fail me, John Perellis will often come to the rescue with a very distilled idea that only he can land on because he's been doing this for 50 years. Yeah. And what JP would say about John Batiste is John Batiste is a musician's musician. Mm-hmm. He's a musician for other musicians. Mm-hmm. He is someone who shows off, um, not necessarily shows off technique in the most flamboyant way, but shows off his historical reference points in a way that will resonate to other people who professionally make music. Yes. Which is why we are now uh, resigned to talking about John Batiste. Because, again. Again. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Can we just play a song from this album? Can we just play... Can I leave the room? This is, I feel like, representative of the John Batiste project. This is Be Who You Are. <laughs> Free New Jeans. Real magic. Free New Jeans. Featuring no. Camilo and New Jeans. And Jid. And Jid. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I just... 
before we do this, I, again, if you work with New Jeans, if you are a member of New Jeans, just know you don't have to do this. And I say that, and there will probably be a performance at the Grammy Awards of this very song. You think? And it, I, and it will because be because it has hailed. the most features. Yes, and it will be hailed as as a as a border crossing, mm -hmm. uh, exuberant explosion of joy. It it won't be that. It it is paint by numbers, and it is unpleasant at its core, even if it is pleasant on its surface. You can only be who you are. Crunch the numbers. Uh, you talk to the three people who listen to this album, and <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I want to. I'm not saying that all music needs to be popular, and I'm not saying that all music nominated for Grammys needs to be popular. Uh, John Batiste's album, uh, World Music Radio, yes, uh, debuted at number 104 on the Billboard 200. Higher than I would have guessed. Sold about 11,000 copies in its first week. Also higher than I including. Guess including streaming, um, and then fell off. Lil Pe Wayne is on this album. Lil Wayne is on this album, as is Jid and New Jeans. Uh, Boy Genius, <laughs> for comparison, sold 67,000 albums in their first week. Yeah. Has already won album of the year at the Grammys. And as far as I can tell, does not have, like, a bunch of critics saying this John Batiste album, you might not have listened to it, but it's actually but it the goes. best album of the year. Well, my question for the Grammys is if we are nominating John Batiste in all of the top categories for the second time on an album that is once again, not really part of the zeitgeist, not no, but it's not, it's not mm -hmm. part of the year in music. No, except at the Grammys. Then like, why don't we see like, the rapper Mike nominated for a rap Grammy or like, I don't know, name another thing that is like not that popular, but is really like Caroline Polachek. I know she's in here somewhere, but like, why is she not nominated for album of the year? She's also selling about 10,000 albums. But, but you know the week. answer to this question. I mean, I mean, go ahead. So the answer to this question is that the people who vote for Grammys, I mean, and they have made ostensible efforts to widen this pool. But the people who vote for Grammys are, by and large, people who have performed on a certain number of albums, whether as a musician, an engineer, a producer, a songwriter. And because of the age of the Grammy voting pool, it tends to tilt older. It tends to tilt away from younger genres, quote unquote. We, hip, we are in hip hop's ostensible 50th year. Uh, but Latin, you know, the explosions in Latin music of the last two to three years. None of that is represented in these major categories. Mm -hmm. um, those people, as JP would say, they favor technique or what is perceived as technique. Technique. They favor hand-played music. Mm -hmm. They favor historically-minded music. Mm -hmm. um, John Batiste is a textbook. He is not, to my ear a novel or innovative musician in any way. This has some of the worst songwriting, like lyric writing of any album that I've heard potentially in my career mm -hmm. is that bad. Lin-Manuel Miranda ghost wrote this album. Am I right to think that? <laughs> no, it would be better. <laughs> Lin at least has bars. They may not be bars you like, but they are bars. <laughs> 